Hi everyone, my name is Katherine Reed. I'm a physician assistant. I practice in internal medicine. I am also a yoga teacher and I am also the founder and president of the National Society of Black Physician Assistants or the NSVPA. When I was in preschool, I had a young girl around my age walk up to me and tell me that my parents should not have gotten married. My father is black, my mother is white, that makes me biracial. At that time, I don't think I remember feeling particularly mad or sad. I was just puzzled. I was a child though. I absorbed that and I continued moving through life. Throughout my adolescence and into my adulthood, however, that commentary would continue. You talk like a white girl. You're not black enough. And again, I internalized and absorbed these comments and kept moving. Throughout my undergraduate education, throughout my paramedic career, and then as a PA student, I would continue to have experiences that I would consider microaggressions from peers, from patients, from preceptors. And I kind of let those things go. I assumed, although they were deeply frustrating, that they were expected in healthcare and in academia. In 2018, I decided to take a leap of faith and begin a yoga, yoga teacher training with Felicia Savage Friedman here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That training changed my life. The training was anti-racism framed. It was trauma informed and it was all things social justice. During that time, I was surrounded by majority brown and black folks with a sprinkling of white faces and it was the first time in my life that I felt like the majority and not the minority in a space. During that time, we talked about our trauma. We unpacked our internalized racial inferiority. And it gave me the language to discuss systemic oppression, race, and my own racialized experiences, much like the one that happened in preschool. I credit the Yoga Roots on Location training with a lot of the creation of the National Society of Black Physician Assistants. I actually created the business plan for the NSBPA during that experience. I think it had a different name at that point. When I was a PA student and when I was a newly graduated PA practicing, I kept having these recurrent thoughts about creating an organization that would offer the support and community that I was looking for when I was moving through my PA, pre-PA career, my PA student career, and then when I was practicing as a PA. And I kept coming back to this idea that someone else would do it, that someone else would step into that role, that it was already created or would be created, but it wasn't my job. After my Yoga Roots on Location training, I recognized that that was my imposter syndrome showing up and that my lived experience was just as memorable as anyone else's. And I had just as much energy, effort and language and context to begin an organization like that as anyone else. And so with that knowledge, I went back to the University of Pittsburgh, went back to Dr. David Beck, who was my advisor at the PA program and brought him this grand scheme of creating this organization, talked about my experiences as a child, my experiences within the PA profession, and said, do you think there's a place for an organization like this within PA education and the PA profession as a whole? And Dr. Beck said a resounding, yes, please continue, move, what can I do to help? And that was all that it took. I began doing research in earnest, I began looking at different resources, compiling resources that I felt like I would have wanted if I were in that space again, my younger self. And I began talking to my peers in different PA programs, folks who I'd gone to undergrad with, who had found PA programs in other states, just to make sure that I wasn't keeping my blinders on, that it wasn't just my lived experience, that I was actually creating a society that would be helpful to multiple people hopefully a lot of people. All of my peers reflected back to me the same experiences that I had. We were one or one of two. We felt isolated. We wished there was more support. And so with that, 
We started the National Society of Black Physician Assistants. We officially launched in January of 2020. I thought it would be good if we helped one person. That was good for me. That's all I wanted. We've grown a lot <laughs> since then, and I'm grateful. The mission of the National Society of Black Physician Assistants is to create a culturally responsible physician assistant workforce that adequately represents the diversity found in our world and works to eradicate health disparities, especially in communities of color and specifically in black communities. See, the mission of the NSVPA is a little bit two pronged. If you look at our website, you would say, Catherine, it's about eight prongs, but we're ambitious. The two major ones are to create a community of support for folks who, like me, did not see PAs of color represented in their hometowns when they were young, did not really understand what the career was until they were much older. Folks who were looking for mentorship or just somebody to talk to about what being a PA really is. And that has many facets for us, that first part. The second part is really about pushing ourselves and our allies to look at our own prejudices, to look at our own implicit bias and to begin doing the internal work that it requires to show up in spaces and do no harm, Act, actually do no harm. Because the thing is we bring our impl implicit biases, we bring our prejudices into every interaction that we have with our peers, with our patients. And research shows that that impacts the level of care that we provide and that is unacceptable. That leads to the health disparities that we are all, all working so hard to decrease or eliminate. It goes against this idea of health equity that we are all trying to achieve. For example, the maternal fetal medicine numbers. When you look at black and brown mothers and their infants and the rates of their deaths as compared to their white counterparts, they are much higher. The way that black people's pain is chronically undertreated. And the fact that folks who practice medicine and have credentials like MD, DO, PA, and NP continue to believe that there are anatomical differences between black folks and white folks, specifically that skin thickness is different, leading to that undertreatment or untreatment of black folks pain. This is an idea and a narrative that was created in a time in US history when black folks were enslaved as a way of justifying the harm, the experimentation on black and brown bodies in the name of health and wellness. And so when we look at the historical context, when we look at our prejudices and our implicit bias, we need to be mindful of that and the way that shows up in the way that we interact with our patients and the ways that our patients are presenting to care, already scared, already not trusting of a system. And the NSVPA really aims to push people gently and lovingly toward that space of self-actualization because it is important not for us just as providers of healthcare, but also us as consumers of healthcare. A couple of weeks ago, I went for a run. I was running and listening to a podcast called Girl Trek. Girl Trek is a podcast created by two black women who are focusing on getting black women up and moving across the diaspora for 30 minutes a day as a way to create healthy habits and begin to create healthy lifestyles. And so this day I was running and I was listening to them comment and talk about the life and legacy of James Baldwin. James Baldwin was a name that I had heard before, but I didn't know much about, unfortunately. But in this moment, as I was running, I learned that he was an essayist, that he was a novelist, and that he was a playwright. That he had eloquently discussed race and sexuality in all of his works, and that he was integral in the civil rights movement. As I was running, one of the podcast hosts also mentioned this idea of radical love, 
something that I had heard before in passing, but had not struck me quite the same way as it did that day. You see, if you would have asked me any time before that moment, what I used to create the NSBPA, what was the impetus for its creation? I would have said that I wanted to give my younger self the community and the support that I was looking for throughout my pre-PA, PA student and PA career life. But at that moment, I realized that the NSBPA is truly my actualization of radical love for the profession, love that requires work and intentional experiences, intentional self-work, intentional work in all the spaces that we show up in as a way to adjust a system so that it actually works for the folks, for all folks, not just for those who have certain privileges or who have a certain skin tone. And so this idea of radical love is much like the ideas of radical compassion and radical empathy, again, requiring action, requiring work. And so my call to action today for folks who are watching this is that you begin to find radical love, radical compassion and radical empathy. You begin to internalize those things to begin to work on your own implicit biases, maybe using the Harvard implicit bias, excuse me, implicit association test or other different resources to identify your biases and beginning to unpack those and strategize on how to ensure that they are not showing up in spaces where you are interacting with patients or peers. I know that these things exist outside of healthcare. I recognize that they exist in academia and in housing and in justice systems, right? And so I know that we can all impact those systems. If we bring radical love, radical compassion and radical empathy to those spaces, we can make this world better for all of us, not just those folks that are impacted by the healthcare system, which again, actually is all of us. And in closing, I would just like to read a quote by James Baldwin. Love does not begin and end the way we seem to think it does. Love is a battle. Love is a war. Love is a growing up. I challenge all of us to push the systems that we operate within, the folks who are around us perpetuating the status quo, to grow up for the betterment of all of us. Thank you so much for listening.